Hey guys, this is Captain Phoenix back in the action, and as you can see on the thumbnail and this title, this is my how to play the Digimon trading card game. And first off, I'm going to talk about the game. Now, the game actually started in 2020 in Japan, which shows this game is actually fairly new in the, mar in the market. And straight away, for the past pandemic and even now, it's been... Going crazy, basically. It's like the new Yu-Gi-Oh. And honestly, it's a lot easier to play than Yu-Gi-Oh I've found it to be, which is quite odd. But in this, I'm going to split down the video into different sections on how to play it and also the different types of cards and also the, everything involved in the, the effects and things required to know the game. And I'm going to start it on the next minute. So first, we're going to explain each of the cards and the types of cards. Now, to explain each card, you have your four cards of the game. Now, first we have the Digi Eggs, which is basically, which are basically the babies of Digimon, which you then keep evolving and then leveling up to make Digi the Digimon themselves, which is the green card, the Digimon. These are basically the main monsters, and there are different levels which you'll have noticed, but I'll explain that a little more later on in the video. Okay. Next is option cards. Options are basically effect enhancers, um, just additional cards you can use to either boost memory, boost attack, or use certain strategies with Digimon to increase your strength. Now, next we have tamers, and tamers are basically humans, who, which are basically the Digimon owners, and also have which have their names mainly, but they all have a, usually a primary focus on keeping memories. Keep boosting your memory, and using up and some more rare can have additional effects which can help. But out of Digimon, there are six. There are actually seven types of colors. There are which are which you see right now: red, blue, green, purple, black, yellow. Now there is white. Now there is normally basis the primary of six, but yellow's more of your rarer cards which you'll see. In the, like in my net profile, the tamer was white, but again, like I said, they're more for like they appear to be more based around for your rarer cards. But the main six here are like your primary cards, which decks are focused around each one having a unique requirement for them. So in other words, you can play certain strategies with certain ones, such as power, memory, um, options, security. Again. I'm going to explain all this further on in the game, little video that I'm doing. Now then, the field that you see right now is a digital one that I made on PowerPoint with my logo on it. It's a little rough draft, but you know it was the best best I could do on a quick notice. Now I've set. I'm also going to explain each of them so you have an idea of how the game how the field really works and I put down in text what they are. Now first we have on the very top your memory gauges. Now there are card slots for them which I'm showing here but some player mats can have them on if you want to have that and there is somewhere you can actually and there is somewhere on eBay if you can buy custom mats you can request to have the Digimon set slots and everything on. Now on the top on the very top left, you'll see your deck pile, so where your deck goes. Now, below that, you'll see the trash pile. That is basically the discard pile when your cards are used, which tells you everything. Now, on the very left, you'll, on the bottom, you'll see the breeding area. This is where your digi, egg deck, your digi egg deck will go and where you'll actually start breeding your Digimon. So when you then, which again, I'm going to explain how this works quite uh, quite later on in the video so please uh, give so I'll give give me some bit of time <clears throat> then on the very top of that we have uh, the security pile which is where your security cards will uh, go now to ex now to explain it quite simply this is basically your life points of the game but again I'm going to explain this a little further when uh, the video when the video goes further and further into the games and how to start and how to win the game. 
Now, first, there are two things you need to do before starting the game. First off, you need the deck. Now, the main deck must have 50 max cards in. And uh, this can be up to, and this can have any variety, variety of Digimon, Option, or Tamers. Now, as for your Digi Eggs, that is, a, that is a separate deck in the breeding area with a max number of five cards. And to start the game off, the first thing all players must do, even before, even after they've made the deck, is shuffle up. And then, last but not least, see who goes first. And everyone usually does the main three, which are the best. You either do rock, paper, scissors, roll the dice, or flip a coin. I personally prefer rock, paper, scissors. But lately, it's been rolling the dice for some reason. So, to start off, the first thing all players do then, after we decide, after it is found out who goes first, they you will send the top five cards to the security pile face down, so not even you yourself are aware of what's in the security pile. Then you will draw another five cards, and that will be the hand you will play with. And then, that's when the fun starts. Yeah, exactly. Quite a nice little way of evolving your, your Digimon and getting out your stronger ones straight away in your first turn. How this works is basically, you will flip the top card of your Digi Egg deck onto the second slot of your of your breeding area, which will reveal the Digi Egg itself. So I, as I'm present as I'm showing one here, you will then Digivolve. You can then, if you would like, Digivolve in in that part on top of that. Digi of the digi egg which again i'll explain more for alert on the next bit which will be about digivolving and uh, to place put it in basic terms digivolving is a way of power getting your monsters out a lot with a bit with a less cost less cost but you'll also gain additional effects for them such as bonus attack bonus power bonuses and uh, and more effect effects Now, as mentioned, Digivolving is basically the levelling up and powering up to create higher, more powerful Digimon. So, to start off with, with your Digi Egg, or you could just play them immediately on the field, but you have to pay the very top price, which is on the top of the card, as shown. And, or you could just Digivolve, which will give you inheritance effects, which I'm going to explain on the next part. Now, let's say I have 12 Memory. Now, I can keep paying that paying the memory cost so let's say i need a blue to summon out this blue digimon and it needs three i can summon it out so i'm going to show the ball basically what i can do so i summon this then i can summon this then i can summon this so long as i have memory to do it or if i go over that memory it's fine but it'll be my opponent's next turn now another way to put it in a good way as well each time you digivolve, you will actually be able to draw one card, which could help you out to summon out more Digimon, or play option cards, or even get your tamer out, or possibly get more memory if it's a certain option card. Then next, luckily you have inheritance effects, which you see below the Digimon card, which I'm, again, I've shown right here. So let's end different inheritance. Some Digimon have inheritance effects, but some don't. Now, to put it in terms, these are basically power-ups and additional effects that can be given to the latest Digimon. So, let's say I digivolve with the level... I've digivolved uh, this Gabumon, but I have this one, so it gives it a thousand plus. And this Gabumon has uh, an effect as, inheritance effect as well. This level, for this level 4, that will, get, that will give it this as well. And some Digimon do actually get additional effects due to them having certain ones like Gabumon, Gabumon as an inheritance card, as a Digivol Digivolve card, which can come in quite handy depending on what stra strategy and stru build you're going to really work on. But some cards effects, again, will only work if you have the certain one. So as for this one, Gabumon. where you can actually make your monster quite powerful straight away so it can get ready for, let's say, digivolving to the highest one you're able to in your deck. 
and many decks are really built on that. They're built on Digivolving Inheritance and powering up their monsters, which I believe is the red ones, actually. I don't really know. Again, I haven't looked at red cards that much. I've only ever known green, uh, purple, and blues. But, you know, you can have a look on uh, line and have a look at cards, and then they'll... And they'll tell you what inheritance effects you can get and how you could build your deck based around those inheritance effects if that's what you want to use to build a strong deck structure. Now, memory is, to put it in terms, the power, the amount of energy that you can use to keep digivolving and playing other cards. As you see on this Digimon, these numbers represent how much memory you will have to pay in order to use the, this Digimon or possibly use the effects. Now, usually at first, memory doesn't cost anything uh, straight away. And uh, there is actually a rule that when your opponent ends their turn, so if they don't, if they don't like pay a lot of Digimon points, that will then make you, that then make you have a little, you actually start immediately with three Digimon free memory so let's say my opponent has four four memory but my opponent doesn't have any other cards to play he will end he or she will end their turn and i will start off and then i immediately get free memory straight away but in other ways let's say i was to play a digimon an option card that cost me two memory and i had and i had two and it's ze so the memory is down to zero, it is actually not the end of my turn. I could still play another card if I'd wanted, so, but, as long, but, until, uh, that, but until the memory actually goes to my opponent's side, if I keep paying, then, not, then, not, then it's still my turn until I choose to run my turn. So, straight, so to put it in other terms, if I paid, let's say I had, let's say I had zero memory, but then I play a Digimon that, cost two memory that and then my opponent's my opponent will then have their turn but any effects that go on like an option card must be played free then your opponent's turn starts so let's say let's say there was one where i get to summon out a digimon that effect must play first then it's my opponent then the opponent will have their turn so that's actually a good thing there to start off with but also I can say there are some cards that will help you gain memory, which they don't really work for your opponent's turn. But if they're security cards, such as this option card in your security, you'll gain to a memory. So if your opponent has zero, but then uh, that effect activates, then that card is triggered in your security pile. That will then uh, make it your turn. But if they do have any effects that resolve, the effects must, go for, must be resolved before it's your turn. Now, suspending is actually quite a simple form of attacking and actually indicates that you have declared, that you are and have declared an attack with this Digimon. Now, to put it in an app, to put it in like a, a vis visible way and ways that you'll know how to do it, if I have two Digimon here, which I have, and I want to use the highest one with attack to attack my opponent's to attack either my opponent's security or one of the Digimon on the field. I will place that Digimon sideways. That tells my opponent and myself that it's now suspended. So when I declare an attack, it's basically put it in terms the one with the highest the highest attack against the Digimon wins. So let's say I have 8,000, my opponent has 6,000 on their Digimon. My Digimon wins the fight. Now, they don't lose any light points or anything because it's not about life points. It's about the security itself. Now, let's say I was to declare an attack on the security. If I attack again with a higher, let's say it was a Digimon and it had a higher attack than mine, my monster will be sent to the trash pile, but so will the security because it's a security card. It's been, it's been, the security cards have been, been used. And if it, and, again, and next, I'm going to explain the security a little more thoroughly right after this one. But, but once the card's been suspended, my opponent can then play, can then attack that Digimon. So if your Digimon, are so if your Digimon is not suspended, 
you can actually uh, just attack your opponent's uh, opponent. You you get sorry. You can attack your opponent's security a lot without them protecting it. However, if they have a blocker, they can suspend the blocker. So then your opponent has to attack it. It's a good defense. And in my deck profile, you can actually see one of them. Now, during the next turn, and also during your first turn, in fact, these are the four phases that you will take in order to uh, play, play out the game. You have the unsuspend phase, which is usually during your next turn. So if I have a monster that has been suspended, I will then unsuspend it so it's flipped back normally. The draw phase, where, I, where the players will draw a card. The breeding phase, where if they don't have any uh, Digi Eggs or Digimon in the breeding uh, second breeding slot, they uh, then you can breed again if you would like. And then you have your main phase, where you can basically play your options and play your other cards, which will uh, basically set up the game for you. Now, uh, it's quite good. As mentioned, Digivolving, you draw additional cards... Unsuspending means basically your opponent can't attack it. Basically means if you don't want to use it anymore to, to attack your opponent's Digimon or the security, you don't have to. And the breeding phase, again, is for if you want to summon out more Digimon using the inheritance effects and uh, Digivolving them. And the main phase is where you play your options and your tamers and just play out everything for attacking, which is... Uh, actually quite good and again your main fit it will always be your main phase until your opponent has until you either end your turn or your opponent your opponent gain or you your opponent then gains memory that is higher than yours and again how to win this game play your strategy build up build up your build up your fields if you any way you'd like wipe out your opponent's security and uh, attack them again and then Attack them directly again if they're not able to protect themselves. And then you've won again. And that is it. It was a little tricky to do this video. Because I had to read up on it quite a bit. And use the knowledge I already learned. And I've actually written a lot of this down. To try and help myself remember it all straight away. Because it is... It's a lot... It's easier for me to say it and then write it down. Than to write it down and say it honestly. Which is weird. But comment down below though what you thought of this video. If there were some things that could have been different. What you, your, if you like it. And uh, if you'd like. And if you want to see me actually do more deck. Certain deck profiles and certain Digimon decks. That would be uh, really helpful. And uh, so comment and subscribe down below. And until then. This is Captain Phoenix. Over and out.